A city attorney calls it a grave threat to the community. Neighbors say they're scared to walk by it, and a city councilman wants it torn down immediately. Tonight in this Fox 8 Defenders investigation, one of the owners of the old De Gaulle Manor says the city, not him, is to blame for the languishing property. This right here um, is what they see, is what they smell every day. In the 1970s, this place was a nice apartment complex filled with children and families. These days, they have no interest so in the quality like of life that we want for our neighborhood. Many consider it to be a blighted eyesore. The subsidized public housing complex now a shell of its former self. You can't even take a drive down there for fear of you don't know what might come out of a, a person may come out. The trees are taller than you and I. This is the old De Gaulle Manor in Algiers. It's a large structure, you know, men's front bridge. It could be so much, so many people. Right off General De Gaulle, the sprawling property spans about 25 acres and is between a preschool and a neighborhood. Children had to walk to school, walk to the nursery, and, and, and look out their back window and see this. Like Penelope Heath Camarillo's son. It's not safe for our children. It's not safe for anyone around here. She walks the public street that straddles the middle of the complex every day. But I try to come around this way early in the mornings as possible, and then just go. Oh, the smell is horrible. Would you be okay with your own children walking through this complex, you know, walking along it, near it every day to get to and from school? Absolutely. That's local real estate developer Josh Bruno. Obviously, you know, people in Algiers are upset. You've got the city calling this a grave threat to the community. Does this make you feel ashamed at all that you are the owner of this property? Well, one, I'm, I'm one of the owners and a minority of, of that. Uh, but. No, absolutely, we're not proud of it. That's why we're trying to move it forward. Bruno purchased the De Gaulle Manor at auction in 2017. Our initial plan uh, was to redevelop the site into more of an office medical use with larger floor plates, office retail, uh, hotel, and some living. But seven years later, nothing has happened here. And when Cantrell, Cantrell took over, things started changing dramatically. What and happened? It, I uh, went from a working relationship where we're working with all the groups to um, lots of roadblocks. Bruno says he couldn't get people in city government to return his calls. Permits, he explains, were denied for work on the site. And he felt the city just wanted to tear the entire structure down instead of allowing him to redevelop it. Bruno's background, he contends, doesn't have anything to do with it. Jane Place Neighborhood Sustainability Initiative calls Bruno one of the top slumlords in New Orleans because of the number of tenants who've complained to them about their living conditions in properties he manages. In the past, you've been called a slumlord, a bad actor by housing advocates. So why should the public believe that if you're going to redevelop this into housing, that it's going to be safe and clean for people in the community? Well, you know, every landlord is an easy target, especially if you specialize in low-income housing, but we don't do any low-income housing anymore. And more importantly, we're not going to be operating any more housing because I've got no desire to be in that business anymore. We're going to develop it, we're going to build it, and we're going to contract out to third-party management. The city contends Bruno and his group, Graggiano LLC, aren't maintaining the property. Well, there's been multiple violations on this property, as you know, but we continue to come out here. We was out here as early as February and cited this property again for 16 violations. In 2021, both the city and Graggiano signed an agreement to settle a code enforcement case on the site. The agreement stipulates Graggiano maintained fencing around the property, but we found sections of fencing missing. Unfortunately, a lot of the panels have been getting stolen. We've replaced them. Um, NOP has not responded to some requests. And then we, what we end up putting is when the fence panels kept getting stolen, we also put concrete barriers up and we reported them also stolen. So at this point, have you just kind of given up on that? Uh, no. Um, right now we're trying to figure out w what we're doing with the city and, and if they're going to allow us to section part of it off. So um, 
we right now we're kind of in a in kind of a limbo. The agreement also says Raggiano must do general cleanup and grass cutting on its property and keep the remaining interior area in generally good order. So right now you're saying that your company is still doing the maintenance work as far as cutting the grass and cutting the weeds. Uh, we haven't the cut the grass in the last four months. We've been doing it once a quarter. Why is that? Uh, well, the grass on the inside is mostly just shrubs because there's no grass right now because we clear and grow the whole site. So when you cut it back, uh, it doesn't really grow very fast. Two years after the settlement was signed, the city issued a demolition notice for the site. I haven't seen anything done in my two years here. I haven't seen much done um, since 2017 when this owner gained ownership of this property. Bruno and his attorneys argue that notion goes against this settlement agreement, where it says the city agrees to lift and rescind the demolition order in this case. It also says a city engineer and a private engineer hired by Graziano must agree before any building be demolished. If they disagree, there must be an administrative proceeding before the city can tear anything down. Graziano argues the city violated this agreement, and that's why it's filed lawsuit after lawsuit, trying to hold on to the property. The city was ready to demolish this property a couple months ago. Um, they were slapped with a, a TRO, a temporary restraining order. We have an owner who is playing ad nauseum, filing ad nauseum appeals day after day, week after week, and it's just frustrating. And who suffers? It's the people who live in this community, and uh, I'm frustrated. I know they're frustrated. It's time for something to happen here. If we were not in court for three years, that this is ultimately dragged out, we would have had at least five to six of the buildings already done and occupied. Algiers neighbors who showed up to one of the most recent court hearings regarding the issue say they feel Josh Bruno and his partners have no regard for them or their quality of life. And they're saying that they want to do something with it, but why not maintain it so you it looks like you are going to do something with it. It just stays trashy. But well, they don't live in this neighborhood, they're trash the neighborhood, and you know he has no excuse for it. It's an insult to the city. The entire city, not just Algiers. Bruno contends it's the city holding back this potential game-changing development. So if you get the permits, you're able to redevelop this site. Is it your word that this is going to be a clean, safe place for people to come and shop, to have office space, to have housing? Absolutely, or else the project wouldn't support itself. Algiers neighbors say the way the past seven years have gone, they're not holding their breath. And we will stay on top of this. That's a promise. Josh Bruno says he believes if the city issues him the permits he needs, the first phase of the project could be done by winter. Last year, Mayor Cantrell created the Dirty Dozen list of the city's most notable blighted properties. DeGaulle Manor is on that list. If you've got a consumer complaint you'd like us to look into, call the Fox 8 Defenders, staffed with volunteers from the National Council of Jewish Women, or fill out our online complaint form.